The next topic is apoptosis. Apoptosis is also known as programmed cell death. It is an important mechanism for removal of damaged cells, cells with irreparable DNA damage from various causes such as free radicals, viruses, and immune mechanism. It also protects against malignant transformation. This can occur in normal tissue for regulating number of cells or cells removed during embryogenesis. These are examples of physiological apoptosis. Uh, it is important in embryogenesis when there is formation of digits from the, the buds. It is important during menstrual cycle where you have the endometrial cells are lost uh, after menstruation. It is important during ovulation and breast tissue after cessation of lactation. This picture shows uh, physiological apoptosis during ovulation. As you can see, um, when approaching ovulation, there is going to be a lot of cells being formed. The granulosa cell and the theca cells becomes uh, more prominent and after ovulation occurs, the cells regress and they undergo physiological apoptosis. Apoptosis is the major cancer killing mechanism. When damaged cancerous cells form, the body will try to remove these cells by apoptosis. This protects the body from getting cancer. However, when the apoptosis mechanism is disturbed, cancer forms. The body also gets rid of infected cells by apoptosis. Hepatocytes that are infected by hepatitis virus can be seen in apoptotic form. In HIV infection, the virus causes the T lymphocyte population to be low. The loss of the CD4 T lymphocytes is by apoptosis. This picture shows a liver cell that is dying from injury by viral hepatitis. Note that the cell is pink with a pycnotic nuclei and there is absence of inflammatory cells. This table shows the difference between apoptosis and necrosis. Apoptosis can occur in a physiologic and pathologic condition, whereas necrosis only occurs in pathologic condition. The cells shrink with there's water loss in apoptosis, but in necrosis, the cell will swell. And the apoptotic bodies are phagocytosed by the surrounding cells of the macrophage, whereas in necrosis, there is going to be inflammation to remove the dead cells. This picture again shows the difference between apoptosis and necrosis. And you can see that in necrosis, the cell will swell, whereas in apoptosis, it will shrink. And there is going to be inflammation in necrosis, whereas in apoptosis, you don't have any uh, inflammation. So in summary, with continuing damage, the injury becomes irreversible and the cell cannot recover. Irreversibly injured cell undergoes morphologic changes recognized as cell death. There are two types of cell death, necrosis and apoptosis. And necrosis is always a pathologic process with different morphologic types as we have seen. Move to the topic of pathological calcification. It is the abnormal tissue deposition of calcium salt together with smaller amounts of iron, magnesium, and other mineral salts. There are two types of pathological calcification, which is dystrophic calcification, and the second one is metastatic calcification. There are differences between the two. Dystrophic calcification occurs locally in dead and degenerated tissue, 
and it occurs when the serum levels of calcium is normal. There is absence of derangement in calcium metabolism. And in intracellular calcification, the first organelle to calcify is usually the mitochondria. Metastatic calcification, on the other hand, is deposition of calcium in normal tissue. And there is increased levels of serum calcium. Usually, there is disturbance in calcium metabolism, such as in hyperparathyroidism and bone damage or disease. Dystrophic calcification can be seen in dead tissues, such as in necrosis, in infarctions, thrombi, hematoma, and dead parasites. It can also be seen in degenerative tissues, such as old scars, atheromas, stromal tumors, and monkeyberg's sclerosis. Metastatic calcification may occur in normal tissues whenever there is hypercalcemia. There are four primary causes of hypercalcemia. The first one is hyperparathyroidism, where you have excess of parathyroid hormone. Second one is resorption of bone. For example, if you have metastasis of cancer to the bone. The third one is vitamin D related disorders, such as vitamin D intoxication. And the, third, and the fourth one is renal failure, causing phosphate retention and secondary hyperparathyroidism. Metastatic calcification may occur widely throughout the body, but it principally affects the interstitial tissues of the gastric mucosa, the kidneys, the lungs, systemic arteries, and pulmonary veins. These tissues excrete acid and therefore have an internal alkaline compartment that predisposes them to metastatic calcification. Calcification vary in size. They can be fine or they can be clumps, often felt gritty when you cut through the tissue. They can show this amorphous granular clumped appearance and they can be intracellular or extracellular or they can be both. So this is a samoma body, uh, which is a concentric lamination of calcium deposition. So this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a type of dystrophic calcification where you see this in degenerated tissue. This picture shows dystrophic calcification of the aortic valve. You can see the semilunar cusp are thickened and behind each cusp, you have these irregular masses of dystrophic calcification. In this lecture, we have described irreversible cell injury. We have listed down the different types of necrosis and their morphological changes. We have described cell death due to apoptosis and its differences from necrosis. And we have listed the differences between dystrophic and metastatic calcification. Thank you.